Hey everybody out there, this is episode 42 of Wired Up Retro. I'm going to be covering steering controllers today. You could say specialized handheld racing controllers for the PlayStation 4. And I'll also be uh, touching a little bit on some of the DualShock 4 accessories that could enhance your racing game experience. You might be thinking, hey, I have a PlayStation 4 controller, that suffices just fine for me. Um, you know, if you were to ask me, what's the big deal? Why would I want a handheld racing controller? I would reply, well, it's the same response that you get from anybody using a steering wheel on a game console. They're going to tell you, number one, it gets you better accuracy in your steering. And number two, a little bit more realism. You know, tilting a thumbstick, eh, not really that real for uh, racing games. So if you want to immerse yourself a little bit better into your racing experience, Having a handheld racing controller certainly is better than tilting a thumbstick. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about an accessory um, that you can add to your DualShock 4 controller. And this one is made by uh, Control Freaks. It's called the Speed Freak Apex. It's for the PlayStation 4 DualShock 4. And it has these little um, areas where your thumb bumps against the side of the uh, what would have been the pad. It's now kind of a U-shaped uh, piece of plastic but it does allow you to dial in your steering just a little bit more accurately. And so I kind of like it. Um, my first experience with a Speed Freak um, uh, device or accessory was back, oh, probably more than 10 years ago on the Xbox 360. And what's nice about the 360 controller is that the stick is way over there on the far left side of the controller. And that gives you really good access to the Speed Freak. I think probably a little better than a DualShock 4, which doesn't have it way over there on the left side of the controller. But, you know, it does work. It works pretty decently um, to get the Speed Freak Apex. Now another thing I want to mention is on the Xbox 360 controller, um, you could add to that controller this uh, sharpshooter uh, thumb pad, and, and it's basically a thumb pad riser. Okay, so if if you take that and add a Speed Freak on top of it, you get a little bit more, um, you could say, travel distance uh, of the thumbstick, and the more travel distance or throw that you have in your steering. Uh, maybe the more accuracy you can potentially have. So if you just take that off your Xbox 360 controller, move it over to your PS4, DualShock 4, and by the way, it, it fits pretty well. It's maybe a hint loose, and you could probably add a, you know, a piece of blue tack or something to get it on there and get it to stick really extra well. But once you got it on there and start racing, uh, you will experience a little bit more uh, travel distance of your thumbstick, which is a plus. Now, the neat thing about the sharpshooter is that it, they're stackable, and so you can add two or you can add three. Uh, the, the riser can be custom designed to be either high or low, so that is definitely adding to that throw of your steering. All right, so let's head on, on to the actual controllers that you can use that are racing controllers. So let's talk a little bit about uh, using PS3 to PS4 controller adapters. You know, this generation of PS4 doesn't really have hardly any options for handheld racing controllers, but PS3 generation definitely had some. There was the HKS racing controller. There was the Thrustmaster Run and Drive, which is available in a wired version as well as a wireless. And that, uh, that's kind of interesting because it's got a dial on it for racing, uh, clockwise, counterclockwise. There's also the Race Room DC-1, which has another one of those clockwise, counterclockwise wheels mounted in the center of the controller. In fact, this kind of reminds me of the JogCon from the PlayStation 1 generation. But uh, yeah, that's that DC-1 is the wired version, the DC-2 is the Race Room uh, controller that's wireless. So those are interesting. Uh, there's the Geotech FR1 racing wheel for the PS3. Um, and then there's the PS3 Move with Move Racing Wheel, which is definitely an interesting looking uh, device. 
Now of the five, the first three are thumb controlled, you know, either one thumb or two thumbs, and then the last two are mid-air steering controllers. So let's talk a little bit about mid-air steering. You know, what really got it ramped up was the Wii game system with its Mario Kart. Everybody ran out and played Mario Kart uh, with their uh, tilting uh, controller. And, you know, PlayStation 3, around the same time, this is around 2006, they came out with the six-axis controller, which was, again, designed for mid-air steering. And then you've got the Microsoft Xbox 360 wireless speed wheel, which came out not too long after the, the six-axis PS3 controller came out. You know, Microsoft was riding on Sony's coattails. And then, of course, the Move Racing wheel came out, and Sony kind of copied Microsoft uh, with the Move Racing wheel. Um, but it does actually have one little advantage over the 360 speed wireless speed wheel, and that is that it can not just tilt left and right, but it also has a, a forward and back tilt, which the uh, speed wheel didn't have. So anyway, that's kind of interesting. So anyway, with the PS3 six-axis controller, there's an accessory that actually is a wheel that you can add on to the controller, and that is uh, shown here. And then you can actually, that's the very same company that made that wheel, interestingly, made a base for it for your steering wheel fans. And, uh, you know, this enabled you to get a steering wheel for, probably for under $40, although it's just the six axis controller games that it would work with. Anyway, kind of interesting. Now, so now that I've introduced you to the PS3 handheld racing controllers, let's take a closer look at the adapter that you're going to need. It's the Brook PS3 to PS4 controller adapter. Or you can buy a more expensive controller adapter that will also accomplish this called the Cronus Max Plus adapter. It's actually a little more versatile and enables you to use GPC scripts which enable you to do some interesting things. And you can go back uh, to episode 40 of Wired Up Retro to learn a bit, a bit more about the Cronus Max Plus. Now, if you like the race room controller, um, you can actually get a 3D printed um, attachment to the DualShock 4. And this is um, produced by someone at Thingiverse, and this 3D printed steering wheel goes right smack in the middle of your controller. Um, there are people on eBay selling these. You could spend anywhere from $9 ordering from China to $15 or $20 if you're ordering from the U.S. sellers. Uh, Etsy has some sellers also selling these as well for the DualShock 4. And so once you've ordered them, then you know you got it connected to your DualShock 4. It uses a little bearing in the center, or you could say a piece of a fidget, fidget spinner. But uh, yeah, once you've got it connected, it really does work like the DC1 or the DC2. PS3 controllers made by the race room uh, company. So if you have that, it's kind of cool and it is actually better than the race room controller in that you're connecting it to a really high quality controller, the DualShock 4, which has really great L2 and R2 accelerator and brake. Those are push-in buttons. The DC1 and DC2 didn't exactly have that. So anyway, it's actually superior to use this attachable device compared to buying the actual DC-1 controller. Interesting, huh? Moving forward, now if you'd rather have a mid-air steering controller, the DualShock 4 actually has built-in accelerometer motion controls that can be selected in the controller options menu of certain PS4 racing games. The good news is that this really works effectively in the games that are going to give you this option to use. The bad news is that the vast majority of PS4 racing games don't have the motion controls available as an option. I've looked into it and the only games that now, here in the year 2019, that have this ability are Drive Club, Gran Turismo Sport, Wipeout Omega, and Project Cars 1 and 2. Now these are all really good games, but nowhere near the amount of the PS3 racing games that you could use the PlayStation Move racing wheel with. And it's not even near the amount of the games you could play um, that were racing games for the Xbox wireless uh, speed wheel. I mean, you could pretty much play all 360, almost all of them, 360 racing games with that wireless speed wheel. So in a way, this is kind of disappointing about the PS4, that these companies making the racing games aren't implementing this very often. 
But I will say that there is now um, a solution for this uh, to get that DualShock 4 motion controls in action in all racing games. And it involves using that adapter called the Cronus Max Plus. And if you have interest into looking in to uh, accomplishing this for your PS4 racing games, take a look at the description below and I'll share with you how it's done. Uh, the Cronus Max Plus can also get the Xbox 360 wireless speed wheel working, so that's kind of interesting as well. But be aware, if you want to really get it working great, I think the DualShock 4 implementation uh, with the Cronus Max Plus is probably the best way to go about it. Alright, I also want to mention that just like what's available for the PS3 6-axis controller, there's an accessory for the DualShock 4. It's called the Racing Wheel that gives you a little better feel on the racing games you're playing. Again, it's kind of all about getting a little better immersion in your driving experience. Another option that might be worth considering when it comes to playing your PS4 racing games is to go back to the PS2 generation specialized racing controllers. Four of them come to mind. The Gamester Pro Racer 2, the Hori Zero Tech 2, which is only available in Japan, the Fanatic Speedster, and then Thrustmaster's Run and Drive controller, which is actually a, both a PS2 and a PS3 compatible racing controller. And by the way, that also comes in a wireless and a wired controller version as well. Um, to get these working, you'll need a PS2 to PS4 controller adapter made by Brook, and you can find that at the Newegg uh, website. And I think that one is in the neighborhood of $30 or $40. Um, another option, though, would be to buy a Brook PS3 to PS4 controller adapter and combine that with a PS2 to PS3 controller adapter. If you already have one of those, you know, just adding that PS2 to 3 to the 3 to 4 will get it all working. And you'll be able to play those PS4 awesome racing games with your PS2 handheld racing controller. Now, if you want to go back to the mid-90s PlayStation 1 generation of specialized handheld racing controllers, I showed you in episode 40 how to accomplish that. You need two specific adapters in order to accomplish this. Of course, the Cronus Max Plus, as I've mentioned before, it's very versatile. You need that, and you also need to be able to connect it to a laptop or a you know, computer of some type. Um, and another adapter that you have to use with it is the P2, P3, and PC controller converter. So uh, again, watch that video. Uh, both these adapters are readily available these days, um, whether you're going to eBay or Walmart.com. Uh, some of these uh, websites have these available for you. Anyways, um, there are two very special racing controllers from that console generation that go above and beyond any of the other handheld racing controllers you've seen present, presented by me in this episode. Uh, the Namco Nijikon provides the largest amount of steering throw you can get in a handheld racing controller, making it ideal for getting maximum accuracy in the steering control of your PS4 racing games. Also, the Ultra Racer is a very nice controller as well, though this steering doesn't have as much throw. It's a smaller dial and there's a smaller turn radius, but it's got a nice mini wheel and some great button programmability on board so you can customize things to your liking. Another nice thing about that controller is you can plug in the game um, Flashback Atari on your PS4 and you'll get some nice paddle action with your Ultra Racer. So that's kind of cool if you're into classic gaming. All right, so I've given you a number of options that you can look into if you're interested in trying handheld racing controllers on your PS4 today. Obviously, you can buy a steering wheel. You know, sometimes having the room to store it is an issue for some people. And also, you know, how do you want to mount it is the big question. Do you want to actually drag a table into your living room and mount it to that? Or do you want to buy a, you know, a racing seat that costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars to mount it to? You might. But, uh, and by the way, if you do that, you're gonna have a wonderful experience. But, uh, you know, I have um, force feedback steering wheel. I bring it out from time to time, but uh, there are plenty of times I just grab my handheld racing controllers and play my uh, driving games on my PS4. So I think that uh, this is definitely worth looking into. If you're into racing games and you want a little better accuracy, a little more realism to your gaming, 
uh, definitely look into this. I've given you plenty of options today. All right, so uh, it's great talking with you guys. Uh, I look forward to hearing your comments below. If you decide to grab one of these accessories or one of these controllers with an adapter, uh, let me know in the comments how things are working out for you and what racing games you're playing with this. All right, so a um, couple things. I'm gonna give you my Twitter handle in case you wanna reach out to me on Twitter and connect with me there. Uh, also, I have a Patreon for those of you who wanna support the channel. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, we do have episodes coming up. I'm gonna be making some purchases in order to accomplish those episodes and uh, any help you can provide uh, certainly keeps this channel running. So if you like the content, support our channel, all right? And let's see here, our next episode uh, may have a little bit to do with the Atari 5200. We're gonna go back to the roots of video games and go back to the 80s and some of the uh, issues that might uh, have to do with the 5200. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to use uh, a mouse with your 5200 and I may be also in the future having an episode that has to do with the Tron controller being used on either PC games or even games that are more specialized. So I, I'm looking forward to showing you that, maybe even a spinner episode in the future as well. All right, so yeah, I think I've covered it all. All right, we'll look forward to talking to you guys in the future and thanks again for watching my channel. Take care.